Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. Today I wanted to do a tutorial on uh, making textured fur using our Stampin' Up! Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol markers. Um, in our new catalogs, we know that Mini Catalog and Celebrations has just launched. Super excited. There's some awesome stuff in here. Um, so, you know, if you are on my mailing list um, for catalogs, you if you've ordered it in the last six months, I have sent catalogs to you. Um, the post office has been kind of hit and miss on people getting them in a timely manner. If you haven't gotten yours and you are one of my customers, please uh, shoot me an email and I can at least get the PDF to you. I will try to put the PDF to both these catalogs on this blog post and I also will put links directly to the store that shows you these items. Uh, post office, a little overwhelmed this year I guess. Anyway, in the mini catalog and the celebrations are some very cute, adorable animals. Okay, And a lot of times you want to get that more detailed look out of your images. So, we know that we have, um, you, you, you're going to die. These are so adorable. We have this adorable kangaroo set. even comes with coordinating dies. So, we're going to, you know, the technique we're going to use, you can texture him. Because a lot of times drawing fur on a smaller image, like we use for making cards, is a little tricky because you don't have the space you would if you're, you know, coloring a larger image where you can actually do more detailed fur look. Um, we also have, which I will be using today, is um, these adorable little um, hot dogs, wiener dogs. Let me see, where are they? Look at these guys. These are too cute. Too cute. So I'm going to show you how to bring these more from a flat image. Like you see here, when you stamp it, the image is sort of flat. There's no contours. There's no dimension. I'm going to show you how to quickly add dimension and add the texture of fur. Um, Stampin' Up's alcohol markers are Stampin' Blends. What I love about these is... Number one, they are extremely affordable. Okay, I do own some high-end alcohol markers. And I'll tell you right now, they're very expensive. And there's more to them than you have here. Stampin' Up! has taken all the hard work out of using alcohol markers. They've, they've, what they've done is they've created your color bases. Okay? What that means is when you're using regular Copics or Spectrum Nor or something like that, you have to determine your three stages of color. Now, each image has three stages. It'll have its darker, its mid-tone, and its lights. So what Stampin' Up! has done is they've given you your darker, your lighter, and then you bring in your color lifter for your third tone. Super easy that way. Um, and they're, like I said, extremely affordable. You can afford to replace them. You can you can even um, rejuvenate them, which I will show you how to do in this video. If you've accidentally left a lid off and your marker dried out, I'm going to show you how to fix that. I'm also going to show you how to revamp your, your color lifter. Okay? So what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to do some browns and grays here. Okay, those are common furs. And what I did, and I do this a lot with different stamp sets I get that will have animals, is I'll do a sheet of them. And I'll say, well, okay, I can do a card one day with the little spotted guy. I can do a, a brindle or a, I think these are called, uh, the color fur is called merle black and or gray and brown so I'm going to show you the different ways to make those textures 
so they look like fur okay it, it's a lot easier than you think it is but look at the difference it adds to your image by adding your shading and your dimension and cast shadows I'm going to show you how to do that today I get a lot of requests I do um, a lot of coloring so I've been getting several requests for um, these type of tutorials so today we're just going to work on the puppy dog and I'll probably follow up another video on some other um, marker techniques that'll help you really enjoy these markers they're different than having just a regular marker because you have more control to, to create depth and, and interest and just that little extra touch, okay? So the first thing you need is when you're using these alcohol markers, you must use Memento, okay? This ink does not bleed with the alcohol that is in these markers, okay? A lot of inks will bleed, including stays on if it's not really dry okay so use your memento ink you can also use an ink called um, it's made by ink on three and this is a no line coloring detail ink and what this does is it makes your image to where it doesn't have your black outline we can do this more this is more for your no line watercolor or your no line coloring okay so we can do another video on this and I'll show you how to use this but let's get started and what I've done is I've stamped three of our little weenie dogs I guess I don't even know what you call them. um what are these dogs dachshunds I guess so I've stamped three of them and I'm going to show you a couple of these to do okay black we will do in a whole separate video on its own creating a black image that has dimension is is a little tricky sometimes we've also got our darling donkey here we're just adding a little texture to him really made a difference and he is if you bought the if you buy the dogs and the kangaroos you can get this darling donkey set for free it is so cute look at this Look at him. Isn't that adorable? He's, he's one of my favorite. There's a lot of great stuff in our celebration. Now remember, celebration is changing. We used to only do celebration once a year for uh, several months. Now we're going to do celebration twice a year and, only, and shorten the period. So you can only get the items in this catalog until February 28th. So if there's stuff in there you want to earn, you need to do it before then, okay? And as always, when you order from me and you use the hostess code, I'm going to email you free tutorials of things. Uh, written out tutorials with instructions and pictures on different... It'll usually feature a, a stamp set or a suite of products to create the cards. That just comes from me. All right, so let's get started let's do a basic uh, let's do just like a basic brown or a spotted let's start with the basic brown okay so what i'm going to start is we have this new color and it's called cinnamon cider i love the colors of this brown so what i've got i've got my light and dark cinnamon cider i've also got my ink lifter i'm going to need that and let's pick a lighter brown as a base because you want to kind of build up your ink and you'll see what I mean. Let's go ahead and use our ivory or let's sample it. Okay, here is light crumb cake. I like that because I need a light base. Or you can use your ivory. And that one's just a little bit different color brown, but it may go better with these. So let's pull those in. Let's do that one. Okay. So when you're first looking at your image, you want to figure out where your cast shadows are. Okay. So a cast shadow is if the light is shining on something, 
you can see where the shadow casts okay see the shadow on my hand okay that is a cast shadow so when you're looking at an image you want to try to figure out where the cast shadows are going to land okay and where your high points and your low points are of your image okay so maybe our little dog has a little round belly so we want to know that right here on his belly is going to be a little bit lighter than the rest okay maybe you know the legs behind okay those are going to be darker because they're behind and they have the cast shadow okay so let's take our darkest marker which is the dark cinnamon cider and we're going to put in our cast shadows okay so we know that the back leg okay let's go ahead and put these back leg shadows in and his ear is laying over his body so let's go ahead and put a little cast shadow around his ear okay let me see if i can zoom this in a little bit for you and let me see where are we how do we zoom here it's been a while so let's go up here let's zoom oh been a while since i've done a video so let me see if we can there we go okay so now we're going to still continue with our cast shadows here now he's going to have a little shadow here by his ear maybe he has a tiny little shadow under his nose or right at the curve of his nose his neck's going to tuck in a little there so let's put a little bit there now his front leg is going to come up into his body there okay and now we're going to add just kind of like a little v that'll give it the roundness okay and then this leg's going to come up like that you're just going to follow the line and it's also going to have just a little bit of a v okay and now you've created the depth of a belly put just a real thin line under his belly so maybe he has a little bit here by his tail okay let's put some there mm, maybe you know this part of his leg is going to be brighter so let's put a little bit of shadow right on his leg there okay and we want his ear to have a little dimension you know dog ears have a little kind of curve to them so i'm going to come out just a little bit i'm going to do it like a half j there okay and that's going to add just a little dimension there to his ear so that's a good start let's just put a little shadow here on his back just because okay we're going to put it right there by his tail all right so now you've got your base it, it, it gives you kind of a road map okay of where you're coloring so now you're going to take your lighter color of the same cinnamon cider and you're going to go right over those same areas okay and pull it out it's going to bleed it out now when you're doing fur you might want to try to consider the direction the fur is laying okay if this were a larger image you would be doing that you would be taking your marker and making little tiny fur lines okay this is a little bit small to try to control making those kind of fur lines okay so let's go ahead and just blend out our shadow areas a little bit that'll get us started so we're just going to go beyond it a little bit bring in our shadows okay remember he's got light here on the leg where the leg is kind of rounded and now let's blend out his belly a little now go all the way in to where you've colored those darts it's not going to lift the color okay it's going to simply bleed it out so that you don't have harsh lines okay now i'm going to go ahead and come down a little bit let's go around his ear blend that out 
and we still want his ear and we're going to go ahead and carry that one up just a little ways there okay and see how we have a, a little design there on his ear it gives his ear a little bit of dimension come under his chin come around his nose a little bit and carry it up okay I'm gonna go right behind this back leg okay so now what we want to do let me see if our ivory is gonna work here I'm going to take our ivory and I'm going to fill in the rest of the puppy, okay? What we're trying to do is build a color base in which to create our texture. So we want to add a nice base of color here. Go right over your shadow areas because all that's going to do is blend it all together. Okay? And since this image is so small, I really don't have to worry about doing the fur lines. I'm going to show you another way after this, but let's do this one. This is your basic and easiest way to do texture. So let's fill them in. Make sure you go over those areas that you've already colored, and all that does is blend the color. Okay, so we have our basic shaded puppy there. Okay, we're going to make sure he's all filled in. And now, I'm going to show you two ways to add texture. The first way, you're going to take your color lifter, okay? I use, for this on such a small image, we're going to use the um, bullet tip. And you're going to take... And you're going to simply dot, randomly dot, and you're not going to see it right away. So, you know, do some dots, make sure they're apart. And as you get to the end of your puppy, the lifter will have done its job and you'll see where these little dots are. Okay, so we're just going to dot all over that little puppy. And all it's doing is everywhere it's dotted is lifting some color which is going to give you some dimensional tones. And see how it's starting to lift and give dimension there? Okay. You can go over your lighter areas a little bit more if you wanted. Where his fat little belly or his, the cash out on his leg is. Okay. Now, I want to bring in more dimension because I want it to really stand out. I'm going to bring my dark back in. And you could leave this just like this. He's perfect. By the time that dries, you can see that it's already adding fur texture. Okay. But I want to add another layer. I'm going to repeat exactly what I just did so that I can add more dimension to my little puppy, okay? So all we're doing is we're going to repeat exactly the same, and it's just going to add a lot more dimension to him. Now we're going to bring in our second again, our lighter of the t of the color, and we're going to pull it out, pull out those lines, go beyond them. Now. You can, let's let's finish blending these out. I'm going to show you something. Let's blend these lines out. And 
Now what you can do is take the bullet tip and now dot. It's really lightly. Really lightly just dot on there. Now if this image were bigger, you would kind of just do little tiny lines, but he's small. So we're going to add dots. Go right into where you were blending. There is a name for this. Stippled, stippled coloring, I think is what it's called. But it it works really well for creating this, this fur texture we like. So we've got our little fur texture there, but what we're going to do, make sure we've got plenty of little dots on there. Is we're going to go in again and dot with our blender. All that's going to do, just go right back over it, is it's going to smooth out those little dots. Now you don't have to push hard on your tip here. You're basically just kind of tapping it on the page. So don't, you don't want to ruin your, your tip. So we're just going on right back over all of that. And it blends it out. If you get a little spot, see where I went out of the line there? I don't know if you can see it right there. What you want to do is take your tip of your marker, hold it on that little spot for just a second, and then pull toward the image, and then let it dry. That will erase any lines you have over. Okay. Now I'm going to take that fawn colored we did, and I'm going to dot that right over it also. And that's going to give us a third color. Just add a few dots in there. It also will blend out those little tiny dots along like the blender did. Isn't he adorable? I love this little dog thing. My girl's sleeping behind me right now. Thankfully she's not going to get up and want attention. Usually she lays her nose on my desk. And looky there. He's a little spotted duck. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit further, we'd just go ahead and, and kind of work it until you get the effect you want. Blend it out nice. You can also take your black Stampin' Right marker, okay, if you wanted to add more detail. You can leave him just like this. He looks fabulous. You can also take and just add a couple little, tiny little lines, little fur lines, just a couple. And it just kind of gives it the, you know, the little look of fur. Go, go right off the edge of his back there. Maybe a couple little spots right here a little bit fur there on the edge of his leg right where we right where we did our um, cast shadow that's just optional okay there you go and there's our little puppy let's do a spotted guy okay I'm going to let him set. Now you can go back. If he's too spotty for you, you can always go back. 
and all you would do is just dot in there again and make sure that blends out real nice but you'll see when he dries he's he's gonna look really cute he's gonna look like this guy okay it's nice and smooth with some shadows and fur texture okay so let's do a spotted and he's basically going to be brown and white spotted and i'm going to show you how to add cast shadow on a white animal okay so let's do i'm going to go ahead and take my lighter of the cinnamon cider okay and let's give him some spots okay let's see maybe his spot comes down here around his eye and let's go to the back of the head here and maybe it includes his ear so let's go ahead and color in his ear too And maybe he has a little spot here on his chest. Let's go ahead and add that. Okay, now he needs a spot on his back. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You can make him as spotted or not as you'd like. Color it in real well. Let's see, maybe he needs another spot that comes up off his belly here. Let's see, should we do a little one here by his tail? Let's do that. one here too okay so he still looks flat right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a really light gray and let's use light smoky slate for that and now we already know where our cast shadows are we we figured that out so let's take a really light gray and create the cast shadow for his belly and go right over the spot it's gonna be okay a little bit here on his chin he's got a little cast shadow around his ear a little shadow on his leg there You can go back over it, okay? You can go back over it to give yourself a little darker shadow. Okay, now let's add some dimension to those spots. I'm going to take the darker. We're going to do our little spots on there. It's going to look like fur. Add a little shadow there on his ear. And it's okay. It looks a little spotty right now, but watch. We're gonna we're gonna blend it out because the only parts that are gonna really show is the brown. And get his spots in there. And then after this one, I'm going to show you one more really quick technique for creating this. You could actually combine the techniques. Okay, we got that. Now let's bring in, you can either bring your light back in again and blend it a little. 
or you can bring your color lifter in again okay so let's take our color lifter and dot that on there I usually try to hold my pen kind of straight up so that I kind of have more control of it as dots instead of swipes and go right over that spot it's just going to blend that in there you can even go over your cast shadows just a hair just lightly hit them maybe once twice and it'll smooth it'll um, smooth out the harsh lines but still give you your cash shadows, okay? Now you have a spotted puppy, but we're gonna bring in a black marker. I'm gonna color his little nose, maybe darken up his eye a little bit there so it shows. And I missed a cast shadow right there in his spot. So I'm gonna take my dark and I'm just gonna do his cast shadow that's in the brown, okay? So he's got a cast shadow here in the brown too. But over here is his white. So all we do is just kind of darken that up a little bit right there. Maybe under his leg. There you go. So you have your spotted puppy. I'm going to lighten this gray just a little bit. All I'm doing is hitting it with my color lifter and it gives it a smoother blend. Anywhere where you have harsh lines. Okay. There's your spotted puppy. Now this last one I'm going to show you is really quite fun because... It's super easy and it can be combined with this. Okay. So let's do the gray and brown uh, brindle puppy. Okay. So let's bring in our grays. We're going to do, um, what are these? Smoky slate. And we'll probably still use some of our browns. And we have another gray here that aside and our light and dark blacks okay so my initial puppy I'm gonna get my cast shadows in there okay and I'm gonna do his bottom half brown okay we got our cast shadow Let's do a little brown feet here. Maybe a little brown by his tail. Let's give him some brown up here on his face. He's got a little brown eyebrow. And let's give him a little brown snout. Okay. And his chest has some brown. Okay, now let's bring, oh, I should have used my darker brown, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Let's bring in our lightest gray and color him in. And we're just going to blend right over those browns because they're not going to lift your brown. I'm using my lightest gray here and I'm setting down a base you can use either side of your marker for this um, a little bit bigger spaces I like using the brush tip okay we're gonna make sure we have a nice coat on there now I'm going to take the darker gray and I want to add some little spots on this guy. So let's add some spots of gray. Let's see, maybe he's got a nice gray spot on his back there. 
And it can be a jagged edge. Because, you know, dog spots aren't perfect. Let's add another little gray spot right here. Now we're going to cast shadow under his ear and collar there. We're going to add a little uh, texture and shape to his ear. You want to leave a little white or a you know lighter edge around the edge. I've got a cast shadow front of his ear. And he probably has a little bit here on his head. I'm gonna go over those little spots a little more. Okay, now we're gonna take our black marker. Or wait, where's our darker? Let's take our light basic black and I'm going to add some dots in those gray areas I'm going to add our little bit of dots to those and then we're going to do another technique that's going to create texture on the rest of it so I'm just adding a few little dark dots in his spots Let's darken up our brown. We're just laying a nice base for the way I'm going to do this this um, technique. You're going to be surprised. It's a lot of fun. Okay, now there's a product out there. And people use it for their um, regular Copics or uh, Spectrum Nors. And it's actually an alcohol blending solution. Uh, it's made by Aradond Air Air Adriondac. Adriondac, I guess, is the maker. And it's just an alcohol blending solution. You can get it at the craft store. You can get it on Amazon. As you see, I've had this bottle for years, so it lasts a long time. What I'm going to do is I have an old washcloth. A nice, rough, old rag washcloth. So I'm going to take and I'm going to fluff that. Okay, I'm going to fluff the end of that. And I'm going to try to put just a little bit. Let's put just a little bit of that blending solution right on that fluffed area. Okay? Doesn't take much. Fluff it up. And now you're going to tap it. Tap it on your image. You don't have to push real hard. And then give it a second because remember it takes the lifting. Uh, it's the same stuff as your lifter pen. It just cuts your time in half of doing dots. This rough texture creates dots. Um, if I had some, uh, um, you can also use, um, you know the cloth that you do cross stitch with? It's like sheets of cloth that's kind of uh, checkered or whatever. You can use that cloth to do the same technique. Put, put some lifter on it and then just tap your image and it's going to leave, uh, you know, the kind of plaid looking texture to it. Now you can also take and smooth out your other animals with it. Okay. Try to stay within your animal image because the color lifter can make the ink bleed to the outside of your lines, which is okay. You can always lift it back off or, you know, fussy cut your image sort of deal. So see, it gave him texture. And he spotted. You want to take it just a little bit further. You would take your black marker and add a couple little fur streaks. Just random little. Just to add some texture to him. It's kind of what a what an artist would do it on some images. Is give you the idea of where the fur is. My black marker is quitting. Um, and you can add his little whiskers there. A couple little lines. 
these are uh, micron pens here that I have. They're real fine tip, and so you're just adding a little bit of texture to them. And there you go. You have three different ways. Now you could go back into this guy and see how I darkened him up and just redid the process. You can do that with him again. And so the more you build up your ink, the more defined texture you're going to get. Okay? So just experiment with it. Stamp yourself out a bunch of animals and color them and try your lifter with a washcloth or try just dotting it. Or if you are doing a bigger image, you would merely take your markers and you would create fur. Okay, you would do random little tiny lines. Okay. And then you would take your next color, your lighter color, and you would do it again. Okay, and leaving white space. Okay, the trick to it is to leave white space okay so there you're creating fur too now don't you know it, it's be creative or be imaginative because not everybody's going to look at it really hard and goes what is that fur because when you're looking at these from far don't those look like fur to you they do so just experiment with it okay and have fun with it um, try different color combinations. Your markers can blend together any colors. And if you're worried about ruining the tips, say like you used your brown and then a black over it, all you have to do is simply wipe off the tip. It's, it's not going to hurt your marker at all. It's not going to stay there. As a matter of fact, you can take your marker and touch tips to create another color. So say like you wanted, maybe you wanted a lighter, this is a uh, light crumb cake, and this is light cinnamon cider, okay? You would take your tips and see it creates another color, okay? But if you wipe it again, it'll just go back to normal, okay? But if you take and you mix your tip, you're going to get a mix of the brown, okay? And then you just wipe your tips off. You're good. Good to go. So this was just a quick, easy, uh, you've got a lot of images uh, or cute animal sets in the new catalog. So just wanted to show you that you can get creative, okay? This one, I tried to make it look like he had longer fur. And all I did is add a couple little black lines for accent there to give him that look of longer fur. The same with our little black guy here. Okay. All I did is I used a really light blue base and then my two tones of black marker to create a black dog. I need to work on him. I need work on my blacks. But regular comes out great. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I am hoping to come out with a few more on using alcohol markers. I get a lot of requests for it. Um, I enjoy using different mediums and things like that. So I will try to share some more tutor tutorials with you really soon. I hope you enjoyed today's class and you have a happy stamping day. Bye-bye now. Like I promised, I wanted to show you how to revamp your marker, okay? Uh, say like your color lifter is getting a little dried out, okay? What you want to do is you take out your feather tip. Okay, I'm just going to use this towel to grab it. Try to anyway. So I've taken it out. And you're going to take the blending solution... Okay, the alcohol blending solution. And just add maybe four or five drops. That's all you need, okay? 
put your tip back in close it up shake it a little but store your markers on their side um, when you store them on their side the the ink and the um, blending solution goes throughout the pen if you stood your pens on end and stored them then of course everything would go to one end or the other so always store your uh, alcohol markers sideways that's how you revamp these sometimes you may leave your lid off and you think your pen is ruined it's not add four or five drops of this shake it up give it a second and your pen is fine okay the lucky thing if you did ruin your your pen or your tips went bad or whatever stampin blends by stampin up are quality and they are also affordable so don't be afraid to experiment and have fun with them i hope you have a happy stampin day bye bye now